In this section, I'll be talking about planning a study. So on this slide, I've outlined a bit of a process for coming up with a project idea and planning a study. These steps aren't set in stone. You might find that you iterate or bounce between them until you've refined a plan that you want to go ahead with. The first part of a project is to start by coming up with a project idea based around a gap, problem or need for replication. Once you have a good project idea that you think could work, it's a good idea to do a little bit of background research and pre-reading on the topic. If you're happy to go ahead with your project idea, then you'll start to form your problem statements and research questions or hypotheses to work with. Once we have a good idea, we can deep dive into reviewing the related literature and understanding how we can frame the study in the context of what others have done. From here, we can look at designing our study in more detail. The first part of a project is to start by coming up with a project idea. This might seem straightforward, but it does take a little work coming up with a research idea. We start by identifying a gap, perhaps what hasn't been investigated before, identifying a problem or need, perhaps something we want to seek to solve, or we can take an existing research study and replicate it. So how do you come up with an idea for your CS education project? This could be inspired by a passion of yours, your own experience, or a challenge you've witnessed in your workplace, or possibly an idea you have, such as teaching an approach that could be worth investigating. It could be an idea, theory, or approach that you've seen done in another learning area, such as mathematics, that you could then think it's valuable to bring in and investigate within the CS education space. Problem finding is not always easy, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. A big part of time should be focused on coming up with a good problem to solve and developing a research proposal. Spend time brainstorming, chatting with colleagues, talking to students, bouncing ideas with friends, reading or tweeting. Once you have your idea, start to narrow the topic in order to refine what it is you're wanting to look at. So you could start broad with something like a general topic such as teachers' needs in a CS classroom. And then you might refine that down to be more specific, such as how can technology be used to support teachers' needs in the early years classroom. Within this phase, when you're coming up with an idea, it's also good to do some quick rapid searches of related work. For example, looking in databases or Google Scholar, just to see what search results are appearing for this area or topic. It's also helpful to do some pre-reading to understand the topic, perhaps looking into an education theory, for example. When scoping the literature, consider things like, what have other researchers done before? What hasn't been done? What is the related theory? What instruments or studies for replication are available? So the next thing that we're going to do once you've refined and narrowed down your idea is starting to develop a purpose statement. So this is what can be a purpose of your study. Examples of a purpose statement for quantitative research include things like examining a relationship between students who take computing classes in high school and those who pursue computer science as a major, or perhaps measuring engagement or interest in computing among middle school students. Once you define the purpose of your study, you can then create a clear purpose statement. Purpose statements help you define your research in a straightforward manner. So it's really setting a direction and a scope for your project. Here's an example of a well-defined purpose statement. So the purpose of this study is to examine the relationship between primary teachers' self-efficacy in teaching coding and the self-efficacy of their students in completing coding activities. After you've decided on the purpose of your study and you've written your purpose statement, you can then craft your research question. This might change a little and that's okay, but it gives you a plan to work with. Research questions provide an overarching direction for your study to follow. It guides the type of study you'll choose, the type of data you'll collect, and the type of analysis on the data that you'll perform. So writing really good research questions is an important step in framing your study. 
So what makes a good research question? Research questions should be clear, concise, specific, neutral and focused. They should also be complex enough so that you're not simply answering a yes or no um, answer. Research questions should define what's being measured, define the population group, be neutral so it's not assuming that you know the answer and be able to be answered in the time frame that you've planned for. So here we have an example of a research question which is what is the impact of Year 7 students' participation in coding activities over a six-week period and their interest and self-efficacy in computer science in Australia? A hypothesis is a statement that can be tested by scientific research. So these can be supported by an overarching research question um, these might be more specific aspects of your research question that you wish to measure. If you want to test a relationship between two or more things, you write a research hypothesis before you start your experiment or data collection. So a research hypothesis states your predictions about what your research will find. And a hypothesis should be based on an existing theory or knowledge so that you're making an informed statement. It can address a number of aspects of your research question. So you might have to write several hypotheses that address different aspects of your research question. It can include, it includes relevant variables. So the group being studied and the predicted outcome. It should include an independent variable. So the aspect the researcher changes or controls and a dependent variable, which is the aspect that the researcher observes and measures. We've got a couple of examples here of re um, research hypotheses, which are there is no significant difference between girls' and boys' interest in computer science prior to undertaking coding activities. Or year two girls' participation in coding activities has a positive correlation with their interest in computer science careers. The last step in this process is to think about unpacking and planning the specifics of your study. This is to consider who. So who will be your audience? Which stakeholders are going to be interested in this project? Who will be your participants? So are they teachers or students? What are you looking at? So this is where um, thinking about the measurements and instruments that you will be using come in handy. So what you really want to do is be clear about the constructs or the things that you're measuring and make sure that you're aligning um, them with your research questions and the tools and methods that you're using to try and answer that question. Think about when. So when will this research project be done? What time of the year is the best time? Will it be before or after an intervention? Uh, for how long will it run? How? So in what way will you run the study? Are you using surveys, collecting online analytics or some other way? And why are you running the study? So don't forget the why. Come back to your motivation, your gap, your identified need. It's easy to do something like collect data, but why is this research important for you, your audience, your stakeholders and your participants? So what you can do is write out and document all your specifics around these types of questions and you'll be using this information in things like your human research ethics application if you need to apply or all of this planning information and the literature you've curated and summarised can go into a research paper or into a presentation. So this is all really important background work that you're doing. To refine your project design, a really good place to start to think about is an elevator pitch. So you've planned out all the specifics, you've unpacked it in detail, but can you think about how to answer the who, how, what, why, when, where question into an elevator pitch that is appealing and interesting and seems like a really great problem to solve? So remember that this planning phase, it's an iterative process. You might find that you revisit your research questions after reading the literature uh, or alter aspects of your initial plans and designs. But once you have your plan, you can determine things like if you need your research um, ethics approval, 
uh, as well as other aspects about how you're going to start implementing your research plan.